Hello everyone. It's been a couple of weeks since my last video, and it's good to be back. Now I've had my head down building some new environments for the game that I'm making, and it's got me thinking about some of the things that might change about VR games in the next couple of years. Now, over the last year or two, it's been really difficult not to notice some of the absolutely incredible changes that have come to gaming technology. A really great example of this is Unreal Engine 5, and some of the new things it's bringing, like really effective real-time global illumination, or the ability to handle potentially billions, even tens or hundreds of billions of polygons, is gonna transform the way we can build environments inside video games and close the gap a little bit between film level environments and game level environments. I mean, just look at that. It is absolutely stunning. The level of detail, the way the light bounces off things. It's truly a glimpse into the future of ultra high fidelity immersive storytelling. And as far as I remember, this demo is running on a PlayStation 5, which is once again, a really good sign for the current generation of consoles being able to deal with these kinds of worlds. But it's also really important to think about technologies like virtual reality and start asking the question, will this be immediately available in the same way that it might be for a uh, flat screen game? Now, don't forget with virtual reality, we need to run at up to 120, sometimes even more frames per second with a lot of pixels and incredibly low frame latency. So things like this, especially the global illumination technology that's being shown off here, uh, in the early days probably won't be feasible. And the way that virtual reality games change, I think we'll certainly pick up this technology over time, but probably in a way that's much more slow and measured, and you have to really pick where you use it. So what have I been up to? It's a good question, and don't forget, I'm building my own virtual reality video game. And I've always been focused on how I can help the industry advance into the future to start building more and more absolutely incredible environments. But I am just a one person studio for now, so I have to really pick my battles. As well as that, of course, we are still working in Unreal Engine 4, and I would be very surprised if the first release of Unreal Engine 5 is ready to develop, especially in virtual reality. I hope every day that I'll be corrected about that and that actually I'm wrong, it's gonna be incredible for VR. But my guess would be that the features will trickle down into virtual reality applications over time. So over the last couple of years, I've been asking myself, what would a 2021, 2022, 2023 released virtual reality game look like? And how can we make sure that it brings some of this absolutely incredible immersion and sense of environmental richness that we're starting to see on the absolute cutting edge down into something that runs into virtual reality and gives people a great experience? And I think I've got a few answers for that. And they're a lot simpler than you might imagine in a lot of ways. And luckily technologies like Unreal Engine are really good at them already even without this new fantastic frontier tech that's coming to Unreal. So let's jump into a world that I've been building over the last week. So this is gonna be the main menu hub for my game. And as you're probably aware, in virtual reality, everything is experienced in an incredibly spatial way. Usually I find it's much better practice to make a menu that is just like a level considered to be a space with rooms and a layout and architecture to basically instruct the player on what to do rather than a flat menu screen or a menu screen in a void. Because once again, everything's spatial. You are in a much more immersive way in the world. So you might as well kind of play into that. So what I'm doing here is I'm building a block out for a very simple dome-like space. And the menu elements are gonna be projected onto the walls. The different menu elements are gonna be broken up by those columns there. And the walls themselves are gonna serve as a simple backdrop, almost like a projector screen. And then beyond that, any good main menu in virtual reality gives you the opportunity to explore beyond just the simple start, load game uh, settings areas. And I couldn't resist building a crypt down below the main menu platform that is going to serve as some kind of space where the player can track their progress or explore what they've been doing. As well as possibly provide a meta hint or two to what's going on in the game's story. And as you can see here, I'm very quickly just using some very, actually quite high poly geometry to build up a various uh, set of architectural elements that don't look particularly human. Because in the context of the game, without really spoiling too much, they're, they're not really. And it kind of gets me onto the first point about next generation games. And I think it's a point that's really uh, important to consider anytime a new generation comes out. And that's that everything uh, in terms of visual fidelity that this new generation might promise is amazing. 
but it doesn't matter if your game is 20 years old or coming out next year. Uh, good games can use what they've got to tell stories, and there have been some absolutely stunningly beautiful games in every single console generation that's ever been released. So lesson one is don't lean on new technologies to solve very basic storytelling problems. The environment has got to basically work with what it's got to tell a story that is rich and focused and immersive. And that's what I hope this environment's going to do. It's going to get the player asking questions about where they are and what's going on before the game even begins. And don't worry, that strategy is absolutely not new or unique to me. But I think virtual reality is a place where it really does come into its own because of how spatial everything really can be. You're already in the world before you press play. So back to the 3D. A lot of the elements that I've started making are starting to look pretty interesting. You can start to see the beginnings of that kind of crypt underneath the main menu platform come together. And what are we gonna do with these? Well, I wanna make them look again, almost like they've been hewn out of rock or like they've been there for thousands and thousands of years. This is a very different architecture to what a lot of my game has been made up of so far. And so we're gonna be treating it differently, an entirely new kind of aesthetic palette. And that gives me the opportunity to jump into one of my favorite new pieces of software, or at least new for me, Blender, where we're gonna use all of those high detail meshes that we built inside 3ds Max with way too many polygons to ever run inside at least a virtual reality game today. And we're gonna begin sculpting them and adding a lot of detail and roughness and edge damage. There we go, that's us beginning there. Now, I'm not a professional sculptor by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I don't even think I'm close to being not even close, but I think from having tried this exercise and began to beginning to develop this workflow, it's something that I really started enjoying. And I'm definitely gonna look at incorporating, uh, doing a bit more of this in my 3D workflow and pursue getting better at 3D sculpting. Now, I'll probably also look at jumping into ZBrush at some point in the future, which is still, of course, the industry standard for sculpted based environments. And for now, this is actually quite amusing. This is about as close as we're going to get to that Unreal Engine 5 ultra high geometry capability that is on the horizon. Now, in Unreal, what they were doing is they were importing from ZBrush directly into the 3D scene. And as a result, a sculpt with 30 million polygons could be dropped straight in. Uh, now, typically that isn't really possible at the moment, especially for what is currently running with game engines and also very much with things like Unreal Engine, where to be honest, you're looking to have at no point much more than one million, maybe one and a half million polygons in your scene at any given time, let alone 30 million from one asset. So I definitely won't be able to work with these raw high detail sculpts here. And we're gonna have to do a much more traditional process of getting them back into virtual reality. It's also worth noting that Unreal Engine's new tech that's coming out uh, is not going to allow every single mesh to be tens of millions of polygons. As far as I understand from what I've heard so far, it's gonna be best for uh, dense topology meshes like uh, photo scans or sculpts. I don't think for things like foliage or anything that's gonna be dynamic, it's really optimized to work with that. So you're still gonna to have to do a lot of traditional mesh creation workflows in Unreal 5 but with the added bonus of being able to do a tremendous amount of high detail sculpted static meshes in your scene as well. But today, that dream is not for us. So let's get these high detail meshes uh, reduced a little bit. And we're gonna do that in an automatic way, because again, I'm just a one person studio. Um, usually you might do this manually or you might put a lot more time into it. In the last couple of years, automatic retopology tools have come a long way and it's really allowed me to basically just save a lot of time in this workflow because it is quite time intensive. Still is, but it used to be really time intensive. So to summarize, we're going to use a tool called Quad Remesher to generate a much lower uh, poly count version of this high detail mesh. There it is in high detail and there it is in low detail. Amazing. So that's cut it down from around seven or eight million polygons with a couple of small little errors we'll need to fix there down to a few thousand and that's a lot more workable. So now let's just do that again for all of the other pieces and then we'll get them processed inside 3ds Max. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the way that high poly workflow works is effectively you are stamping down your ultra high detail sculpt uh, through baking normal maps onto the low poly mesh that's going to end up going into your real time scene. And that way you're going to have all of that uh, detail that you sculpted out, but on a mesh that's much, much lower to run. Now, it's not always perfect, but you usually get the majority of it across, and it's a fantastic way to get a lot of really complex detail running in applications like virtual reality or mobile or current or older gen consoles as well. It's been done for absolutely ages, and it's still a really, really relevant way of making 3D uh, assets. And now, with that more or less done, although there are a few pieces I've done off screen as well, let's jump over into Unreal Engine and see how it comes together. So we're going to take all of those textures that we made earlier in Substance Painter and we're going to bring them into Unreal Engine. I've packed them out uh, so that they're a bit more efficient and literally just there you go. You apply it on top of the meshes and we're blending that with some detail uh, normals as well and some uh, detail base colors. So that's starting to look pretty good and you're starting to get a lot of that richness and a lot of that detail in these meshes without needing to have millions of polygons. Now hopefully one day that'll change and we can just get the ultra high detail assets in. And I would hazard a guess that for VR, this will start happening over the next five to 10 years. Now, don't forget we've got PC VR, which is capable of using the latest hardware. And then we've got mobile VR, which uses, well, mobile processing. And although what's being done on the Oculus Quest is absolutely incredible, I'd hazard a guess that this technique, the ultra high detail technique, uh, that Unreal Engine 5 is gonna be using, is probably not gonna come to mobile VR anytime soon. So what I'm doing here is still going to be relevant for a long time to come. Now let's get some pieces assembled. There we are, we've just started laying out some of those elements that we used and we've dropped in some very basic lighting just so we can start to see how things go. I'm dragging over a skybox and some post-process volumes from uh, another scene that I've been making. And yeah, that is starting to come together. Now let's drop a few more of those pieces in. At this stage, it's just a process of processing all of the sculpts that we did, getting them into Unreal Engine. It takes a bit of time, but it's not the worst, it's fairly straightforward. And as the hours ticked on, and as I kept processing assets and bringing them into Unreal Engine, it got me thinking, why have I been thinking about next gen so much recently? What specifically at the moment has changed that's basically got not just me, but a tremendous amount of the industry uh, pre-focused on next gen and the way things are changing? And I think in general it's pretty obvious. We've got a couple of new consoles out and they can do a lot more in terms of processing power than the ones that came before. We've got some absolutely amazing RTX cards that have come out. The 3090 is a beast. And to top it all off, the spectre of Unreal Engine 5 looms over all of us, promising to evolve the way we not only play and experience, but also make video games. But all of this, as I say, takes time. And I think if you do it wrong, it can detract away from the absolute most important focus of any VR project or any game project in general. And that is the core question at the heart of all of these projects. Does it move you? Now, I think there might be no better medium for immersing someone in a new world letting them be somewhere else, letting them be someone else than real-time storytelling. Whether it's virtual reality or whether it is traditional flat screen, this medium has allowed our generation and the generations before to experience stories in a way that no one else in the whole of history could. To be in the center of the story, to see it evolve around you. And yes, technology lets us do this better and better every year, but storytelling is something that's as old as time. And you always have to work with what you've got to make sure that it can be as good as possible. So as a small studio, I need to pick my battles. And the battlefield I've chosen is a really rich and exciting environment that in a very simple visual way, just as you move through the world, starts getting the player to ask questions about what's going on. And I want it to be as high fidelity as possible. Now, Unreal Engine 5 might have the capability to really let me level that up, but I can't rely on that. Unreal Engine 4 is such an unbelievably world-changingly powerful tool for someone like me as a small studio. It lets me do things that five, 10 years ago, I couldn't even dream of doing. And I've still been able to get some pretty good results with uh, things so far. So now, as always, I've just got to keep my head down 
and keep going. There's a lot of work left to do, there's a lot of areas left to make, and I hope that the environmental part is going to be good. Of course there's also a lot of programming and narrative and scripting and interaction. A few incredible games last year showed us how interaction needs to work. But the environments, I hope, will be my contribution to making some really great spaces and worlds for people to explore. So, to summarise the video, as the tens of thousands of people across the world, who, just like me, absolutely love virtual reality, are working to see what the next generation is going to be, I'm going to try and help build some absolutely awesome environments. And it should just be one tiny piece of a great puzzle. Maybe Unreal Engine 5 will help a bit later. Maybe not. But we'll see. Anyway. For now, I've got to get my head back down. I've got a tremendous amount to do. And I'd just like to thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Take care. And before I go, I'd just like to mention over the last few months, I've been getting a lot of questions about the way that I build environments. So I thought for this video, I would record the entire process of making this main menu scene from start to finish, as well as a much more detailed tutorial on how to make these kinds of sculpted elements. So I actually built it out as a tutorial package. It's about two and a half hours of tutorial content, an Unreal Engine scene, and also two hours of basically this entire creation process uh, edited down from 40 plus hours of work into an artist's commentary. So if that's something that interests you, and you are as well trying to learn a bit more about Unreal Engine, uh, check out the link below, see if that's something that you're interested in. And if not, don't even worry about it. I'm going to keep uploading to YouTube as well. Cheers, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>